Well, Razorback fans, the Razorbacks got the big victory in game one. Looked really impressive doing it. So let's recap and talk about the Razorback victory over Western Carolina here on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now with new customers can get $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as it was a Labor Day weekend. Did not have a podcast yesterday as uh, I was actually on the lake enjoying it in Lake Hamilton. So that was a a lot of fun. Shout out to uh, Kenny and Lenan Hill for that and wish you would have been there, Beaumont. I know you're listening, Uh, but it was a great weekend for for many reasons and I hope everybody had a very fun and safe Labor Day weekend. But uh, the most important thing is that Arkansas got a victory. I don't care who was it against. I don't care how it looked necessarily, even though we are going to talk about it, but they won. And now they are 14 games away, 14 wins away from the national championship. So on pace, on pace for that. Um, so I, there was a lot of things to go through and we'll talk about things I liked and things I didn't like in the game, probably in the next segment, but just to give an overall, what stood out, you know, kind of start with that. And what was, what were some of the things that I really noticed? Well, first off, I was there in the, at the game and, and, in the uh, in the stands, actually, I was not in the press box. I was there with the the normal people, you know. <laughs> but I'm kidding. Don't don't think anything about that. Uh, but I was there, and I got to see it firsthand. And you know, we'll talk about some of the other things that happened there in uh, Little Rock War Memorial Stadium. But overall, like I was just, I didn't know really what to expect. You know, we we gave our predictions and what we wanted to see, and you know, what we what we would see. But as we know, in Game One, there's just a lot of uncertainty. You don't know if a certain unit's going to struggle, if a certain unit's going to dominate. You don't know, uh, you know, who's going to be the leader, who's not going to be the leader. You don't know who's going to score first. You don't know, like, a lot of things. But that's what makes it so much fun and also very nerve-wracking at times. But for the Razorbacks, uh, that wasn't really an issue, at least in this one, because Arkansas got out 21-3 to at the end of the first quarter and never looked back. 56-13, final, victory, uh, final score for the victory for Arkansas. And they made their... Presence known from the get-go. We'll start with the uh, offensive side of the ball, too, with KJ. You know, KJ is KJ. KJ had an an great game. He completed the first 12 passes that he threw, went 18 of 23 overall for 246 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Just outstanding. Outstanding. I felt like at least a few plays in the game, and, I mean, there's a lot of them to choose from, but at least a few plays there in the game, the accuracy that he threw with, like he's always been good. Like he's always had some accuracy, but he was throwing some passes where only only the wide receiver could catch it. And it was a lot of trust in the wide receivers. And he was making some phenomenal th- throws. He was making good reads. He was he was playing it out in his head the way it needed to be done. And, you know, he didn't really make any mistakes. Uh, you know, he was just crisp. And I loved seeing that. Again, I know it's Western Carolina. I know it's Western Carolina. But when you're talking about a quarterback like KJ, who's got so much expectation this season, and he's got a brand new offensive coordinator, because he's, he's only had the one in Kendall Bryles his entire college career. So you have a new offensive coordinator. Uh, you know you got some new wide receivers to throw to. Uh, you know that there's this expectation put on you. And for you to come out and right from the get-go, just do it. Just get it done. No problems, no nervousness, no uncertainty. Just boom, 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 making throws right and left. Just that's, that's incredible. I love seeing that. I love seeing that. Um, that's, if you're going to be a you know, Razorback fan this season, uh, that's what you want to see. Because I had this thing, and I think you probably even heard me talk about it on my podcast uh, just uh, last week. I was like, I had this thing, and I thought that maybe the offense would take a little bit to get going because it's a new coordinator, and you know there may be some you know, confusion or whatnot. I didn't see that at all. Now, it's not to say it was perfect, but I did not see that whatsoever. Uh, I didn't see any problems on that front. And I think that when it came to 
uh, you know, some of the numbers and stats. I know we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more specifically uh, here in just a second. But uh, overall, it looked like a team that had a lot of seasoned veterans, had a lot of guys that, you know, were, were already hyped up to play the game, but executed their game plan. But with KJ especially, that one was the, that was the big one. And I felt like he, he did exactly what he needed to do. Uh, the rushing attack, though, uh, le- left a little bit to be desired because Arkansas only rushed for 105 yards on 36 carries. That's an average of 2.9 yards a pop. Rocket Sanders, the uh, preseason All-SEC player and preseason All-American, 15 carries for 42 yards. He had two touchdowns. His longest carry was 14 yards, but he averaged only 2.8 yards a carry. Not what I wanted to see. I felt like there was maybe a little time, like a little dancing around too much. Uh, I think that the push wasn't necessarily there at times, but I'm not trying to make excuses. I think you got to give some credit to Western Carolina where they stacked eight people in the box and they're like, we're, we're going to just keep you from trying to run the ball. If KJ beats us in the air, that's one thing, but we're going to make sure that we do whatever we can to keep KJ out of the game in the rushing game and keep Rocket out of the game in the rushing attack. And I think they did a really good job of that. Um, and also, you know, something that these new teams uh, or teams like this, they'll throw a lot of weird things at you just because they have nothing to lose. They play with a little bit more reckless abandon. And uh, I think that that probably played a part into it. Not making an excuse because you need to do better than that. Like you cannot have uh, that type of game and in the rushing attack with all those running backs and just expect to have a lot of success offensively. But luckily with Dan Enos, great offense coordinator, He's like, all right, well, I see what the defense has given me, so I'm going to beat them in a different way. And that's what Arkansas did. They did in the past game. But Rocket had 15 carries, 42 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, A.J. Green was, was a little bit better. He had four carries, 22 yards, and five and a half yards. Isaiah Agostov, who is the uh, true freshman, he had four carries for 20 yards. Shaw DeBinion, three carries, 15 yards. Dominic Johnson, three carries for 14 yards. And K.J. finished with five carries for 17 yards. So, again, I want to see more out of it. I'm not concerned. I'm not worried about that just yet. We'll see what they do against Kent State this upcoming week. But um, was a little surprised to see the lack of a rushing attack uh, have any sort of success there. Now, the wide receivers. We'll move on into that part. The wide receivers, man, I know, again, one game, so can't overreact. But that was, that was impressive. That was what I wanted to see. They were, there was a confidence with KJ throwing them the ball where they caught it from anywhere on the field. Uh, Jaden Wilson had an, an, a phenomenal game, three catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. He, he was the one that had the first touchdown where it was just a great block by Isaac Tesla. Turned the corner, and he was out of there. Like he, he was gone. Like Beautiful, beautiful game out of him. Andrew Armstrong had some big catches. He had five catches, 78 yards and a touchdown. Isaac Tesla. Three catches, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Dude's a beast. Uh, and even had uh, Davion Dozier. He caught a pass from Jacoby Criswell. He got in, by the way. I mean, man, failed to mention that. He got in, threw only two passes, but completed them both and had a touchdown. Looked really good with the offense going down the field. But uh, he was the one scored touchdown with Criswell. Luke Haas, the tight end, true freshman. He's the one that caught the first pass. Two catches for 19 yards. Isaiah Satania, he only had two catches and 14 yards, but that dude on punt return, yep, yeah, yeah, there's going to be some times where people don't want to punt to him. He's going to break one this year if he's got an opening. Like he's, he's that good. So I really liked what I saw out of him, too. Um, so that was really the offense. Uh, again, the, the, you just got the offense that just you know needs some work and whatnot. And then uh, on the defensive side of things, I loved what they brought. You know, I, I really did. I really thought that what you, know, you wanted to see from a defense against an offense. Like Western Carolina is a good offense. If for their conference and for their league. Like they are. They score a lot of points. They have a lot of success, especially in the passing game. And Arkansas, who was dead last in passing last year, uh, you know, you wanted to see a little bit from them. And they did a I think they did a really great job. They they held their quarterbacks to uh total because three of them played, but twenty five for forty, two hundred twenty seven yards and four interceptions. No picks or no touchdowns. Yeah, I like that. Their best running back, Desmond Reed, 11 carries for 11 yards. He averaged one yard to carry for a touchdown. I like that. Uh, Jaheim Singletary was a dude. Like He was great. Jaheim Thomas, uh, Jaheim Thomas actually led the team in tackles with eight. Jane Johnson was really good. You know, He had a couple of plays that were, he was breakdowns, but he was really good. Chris Paul, five tackles for him. Thought the secondary was good overall in their tackling. The defensive line, you know, maybe he should have gotten a little bit more push at times, but they did an overall great job, so 
But yeah, man, like that's that's what I wanted to see. That's what I really wanted to see. And also with special teams, wasn't really anything of note other than Isaiah Satania, who's looking really good in the punt return game. Uh, but yeah, I'll give props, Max Fletcher, who struggled a lot last season. He punted five times in this game, and he averaged 49 punts or 49 yards per punt. And he got it inside the 20 two different occasions, and his longest punt was 52 yards. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. So that's just kind of the recap of it all and, and looking at it. Now, I know I kind of talked already about some things I liked and things I didn't like, but uh, we'll go into more specifics here in just a second. But, folks, I got to tell you, though, about athletic brewing. You know, it's because a crazy concept that people probably haven't even heard of, but I'm telling you, it will blow your mind. They have completely changed the game in the non-alcoholic beer game. And they make non-alcoholic beers that are actually tasting good. You know, that's the thing that everyone's always so concerned about if they're having non-alcoholic beer. They're like, oh, well, you know, it, it probably tastes bad. No, that's like, it, it, you couldn't tell a difference. You could not tell a difference because they are great tasting and award-winning and they beat out full-strength beers and global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Goldens, Sours, and so much more. And they fit for all the times, too. Sometimes if it's just watching a big game or, you know, tackling work or, you know, working out, like you can drink them anytime. And that's what makes them so enjoyable. And you have no hangovers ever. You can find Athletic in store, online, and at bars all around the country because it is taking over the beer world. So check them out right now with the Athletic Brewing Co.'s non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers use Locked On as a code and to get 15% off your first online order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, you know, we recap the game, and I, I want to get into things that I like and things that I didn't like. Basically, things that I want to see more of and things that I need to see improved upon. Now, we'll start with the things that I like, because I think that there's a lot more of things that I like than things I don't. And that's what happens when you have a dominating game. But here's the thing, things I like. I like the fact that Arkansas was able to not only offensively be able to score 56 points, which, by the way, is more points than Arkansas has ever scored under Sam Pittman in a game. I think it's more of a Kendall Bryles and uh, Dan Eno situation, but that means something. You know, People can scoff about, oh, well, it's Western Carolina. Well, they played FCS to teams before. They couldn't do that. So give a lot of props and give credit where credit is due. But I love the fact that the offense was able to set the tone so early. You know, The defense was on the field first. They forced the team to go three and out, and the offense just took it to them. They had a game plan, and they executed it. 21 points in the first quarter. You ain't coming back from that. And that could just do wonders for your confidence level. That can do wonders for everybody involved. I mean, it's everything that you would want to see in a game like this. And Arkansas did it. KJ Jefferson did it. Dan Enos did it. They set the tone. They took what the defense gave them, and they wrecked them. And they never looked back. And they kept scoring, too. It's not like uh, you know times where uh, you know, they just kind of put the foot off the gas. Because let's, let's be honest about this. And again, I know it's Western Carolina. I'm going to keep saying that. But think about how many times last year Arkansas got down early. Like I'm talking about like so early and they had to either claw their way back or they ended up losing the game. Mississippi State, I know on the road, they got down early and couldn't really form a comeback. Alabama, they were down 28 to nothing and had to claw back to get to 28-25. Still ended up losing, but still, it was like, it, you know, when you let that happen, it's tough to come back from that. And then even times where they got up big, they started letting the score kit back, like Ole Miss. Well, they were up 42 to 7. I don't remember what the final was, but I think it was only like 42 to like 24. You know, it was a fairly closer game than what it looked like because they kind of put the foot off the gas. Same thing with BYU, it ended up being closer. So I like just to see the team offensively. Start well, get it done, step on the throat, and finish them off. I loved seeing that. I want to see more of that. I also really liked the defensive 
game plan, but also just the way that the secondary played. Um, I know it didn't take much to get better than what you once were, but they had four interceptions in this game. And also kudos to the offense taking advantage of all four of those interceptions. But they had four interceptions in this game and that they were able to, to take advantage of. They were relentless when it came to their secondary. Like, I don't think that there was many times that there was a wide open receiver. There was no receiver downfield wide open, and it was just you know a, a bad pass, and that's why he ended up not getting it. You know, I didn't really see any of those things. I just saw a defense that was aggressive, that tackled really well, that forced some turnovers, and made the other team work for every single bit of it. Like, I really, really liked that and appreciated that. And another thing, too, that I don't know if if anybody really noticed this as much or really cares as much as I do, but I know I certainly do. I really liked the fact that the penalties. Okay, so Arkansas had seven penalties in this game for 86 yards. Western Carolina had three for 30. So seven penalties for 86 yards. Got to clean that up. Some penalties I don't think were uh, warranted, but here nor there. But given that, almost none of them were procedural pen- pen- penalties. No lining up in the wrong spots, no you know, false starts, no just your own mistakes. Like if you call for a holding, it is what it is. If it's a pass interference, it is what it is. You don't need to have it happen, but that you can, that sometimes it's just somebody's making a great play. You know, a player gets behind you, you got to hold him. Uh, you know, a guy's getting behind you, you got to, you got to, you know, interfere with him a little bit. Like sometimes you can at least accept that. But the stuff that you are doing on your own and, you know, killing yourself with, that can't happen. And Arkansas had a, a pretty good amount of, or not very good amount, I should say, of penalties that were involving that. So I, I like that fact. And hopefully that continues on, especially for a first game. Things I don't like, though. I don't like the fact that even though they stacked eight in the box with Western Carolina, even though that they did, you know, really probably threw some things defensively at you, I don't like the fact that you have all those running backs in that offensive line and you weren't able to get really anything going. Like I can understand it if, you know, they're they're just getting a few yards here and there, and then you go through the air. But you're telling me you couldn't get anything? Like Rocket Sanders, not get you know, you you can't have an All SEC season with that type of game. Like you got to be able to. Get after it. Now, again, I'm not concerned about it. I'm not worried about it. I just did not, I did not like that. I felt like if you're a much phys- more physical team and you're a much better team, you should be able to go out there and just dominate that. So I didn't like seeing that. I wanted to see a little bit more consistency and a little bit more aggression there. Um, but, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it, though, as far as things I did not like that really stood out to me. Um, I thought the defense was good. I mean, again, I think the D-line hopefully can get more pressure, but... Uh, that'll come in time. I, I think they got all the physicality that they need there. I like the energy too. I really like the energy that they brought. So, but yeah, good job. Good job, Razorbacks. After a roaring start, that's what matters. Uh, we'll get into our final segment, which is probably going to be uh, giving a lot of people some anxiety when I talk about it, but we'll do that in a second. Uh, but first, I got to tell you about FanDuel. Speaking of not giving you anxiety, you better get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That's a great deal. You can't get better than that. Now is the time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on anything from spreads to player props and to so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I really did not, this is not something I wanted to do, folks. I I know you're tired of talking about it. I'm tired of talking about it. But it was a story. It was a thing. Uh, I mentioned in the early part of the podcast, I went into the Razorback game as a fan. I had my own you know, tickets and whatnot, um, sat with a friend, and it was at War Memorial Stadium. And you know, say what you want and how it feels. Like, I'm like, take that out of it. We're not talking about Fayetteville versus Little Rock or anything. Take that out of it. We're just talking about War Memorial. This isn't a comparison. is isn't divide. Like, let's just look at this game. The fan experience overall was awful. 
It was awful. And it wasn't something that I just experienced. Because if I just experienced, I wouldn't even be talking about it. But considering how many of you, especially on social media, brought up the awful conditions of the, the situation there at War Memorial, that's, that's why I'm bringing it up. Because it was, it was less than stellar. And I was really disappointed in it. Not because of, again, not because of anything like, oh, I just want the games to move. It has nothing to do with that. Because I paid for a ticket. Like, I, I, this, was, this is somebody that's like, I just wanted to, like, voice my displeasure because I purchased a ticket. And even though I may feel certain ways, like, I still want my experience to be great because that's still happening. The game is still there. But you can't do anything about the heat is what it is. Getting into the game was extremely difficult. Um, it seemed like there was only a few gates open. And I know that probably certain sides were better than others, or certain gates, but the gate that I was going into, which was part of where the tailgate was, where I was at, the line was forever. And there was so much confusion. I'm like, why is it taking so long? Well, then we have a guy in front of us come over, and he says, hey, if you come right over here, coming in this direction, the, the line's moving quick. I'm like, oh, okay. So we followed him, and we get over there to the side, and it is fall- going in quicker. But it's like, People are going in this way at a much higher rate, but the line that we were in was coming in almost sideways, and it wasn't letting as many people in. It's almost like a, you know, merging on, a, on an interstate. But I'm like, why is that a thing? Like, why are people even doing that? Like, why aren't they? Because they had it set up to line up that way. I'm like, that, that's a mess. So it started off already terrible. Then we go through security. Security's fine, whatever. But then no one even scans a ticket. You know, they talk about this new ticketing policy and how important it was to make sure that you have your ticket. I didn't get my ticket stand, and nobody else did that I know of. Again, I'm not bringing this up just because it's anecdotal for me. I'm talking about this is a lot of people I've talked to and discussed. Didn't get a ticket scan. Um, you go in, and it, it again, it's hot, but you know, we got a buddy of mine. He goes and gets his refreshments and whatnot, and I go and get to our seats. Well, it, we're crowded in, and the crowd was great. I want to say that, too. The, the amount of people that showed up was awesome. So shout out to everybody that showed up. That was a great crowd. A great crowd that deserved a lot better situation. I think there were probably 45,000 people there. And, you know, it may have been the biggest one in, in War Memorial in a long time. So, again, shout out to everybody. It was a great crowd. But, like, I go, I'll go to find my seats, and we're pretty packed in there. And I look at it, and the, the, the bleachers are faded off to where I can't even see where the number of the seat is. And I was like, well, this must be it because I'm on the right row in the section. Well, I sit down, and then these people come over, like, midway through the first quarter, like, hey, those are our seats. And I'm like, okay, well, we're, I guess we're four seats over, but then, like, nobody, those people are sitting in that seat, and they're like, in the middle of the game. So I'm like, all right, we'll just go and try to find somewhere else. Cause they were like, no, these are our seats, even though they weren't like hundred percent. But so we did that. And then we're walking around and my buddy was going to try to find refreshments again. It was like probably late first quarter, early second quarter. The concession stand lines were insane. I know it's always crowded at games. And so people were just saved me that like, I I'm not an idiot. I know how crowded concession stand lines get. That was excessive. It was an excessive long wait an excessive long line. And they ran out of water. Like at halftime, before halftime, they ran out of water on a hot day like that. They ran out of water. Uh, places that you were trying to go, a lot of the AT, uh, uh, credit card and de- debit card machines that are scanners that were down, they went down. A lot of them did. There was cash only. Well, they have some ATMs, but you go to the ATM and either the ATMs are down or there's no cash left. The vending machines that actually took credit cards Done. They don't. They, they can't do it anymore. Cash only. And people were. I know people that waited in line for at the concession stand for an hour and a half. An hour, an hour and a half. People went to the bathroom to try to you know get water that way. The water was scalding hot, like just ridiculous, like shower water, even hotter than shower water. Um, there was no organization to it. Uh, the the of course you know like. I I am not somebody who's just trying to crap on a, a stadium or an atmosphere or anything because again I, I want it to be as good as it possibly can like if i'm going i want it to be as good and i'm not calling this out to try to buy have any division or divide the fan base i'm not doing that because it's dumb and i think it's been done dumb a long time but i'm calling it out because arkansas plays uapb in war memorial stadium to open the season next year same type of setup they need to fix it 
and to learn from this ma- horrible mistake of what that was on, on Saturday and make it much better. I don't know if it's simply just talking to the, the people at War Memorial or if it's the parks and tourism who, who own the stadium. I don't know if it's a U of A. Like, I don't know and I don't care. Whoever it is, that cannot ever happen again. You cannot run out of water when it's 100 degrees outside, knowing that it was going to be 100 degrees outside, knowing how many tickets have been sold. You cannot do that again. You cannot allow your, your credit card machines to go down across the board. You, you just can't. You, you, you know, traffic apparently was getting in. I was there early enough to where it didn't. But I heard people say that it was a nightmare trying to get to their parking spots. Because like, the best, I don't know if there's a Little Rock Police Department or whoever. They just kind of like, ah, we don't know. What, yeah, just Whatever. Sorry. Find it. Good luck. No organization. Like, it didn't seem like there was a lot of effort put into it. And that's just sad because I'm like, if you really want these games to stay in Little Rock, you got to put a lot of effort into it. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. But, and again, this is not something I'm bringing up just because it was me. It happens to so many people. I go on social media and see some of the Facebook posts that have been put out there. It was, it was bad. It was bad. And I'm talking about people that I am friends with who are wanting games to stay at War Memorial, who have been going to games at War Memorial since they were kids, who are from the central Arkansas area. And even they were like, I'm done. This is awful. So just don't let it happen again. Fix that. Because if it happens to be the same problem next season, then I don't know what you're what you expect. Then if that's the effort that they're going to put out next year, Put, put the Arkansas State game in Fayetteville. If that's the best effort you're going to give, then that's the, the Razorback fans deserve better than that. The Razorback fans that paid the money to go to that deserve better than that. They deserve better. You know, it's such, you're supposed to be such a great experience. They deserve better than that. That's all I'm going to say. And that's the last time I'm bringing up War Memorial for at least this football season. That's it. All right, we're done. We're moving on. End of story. But appreciate everybody listening into Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.